Welcome back to Monroe Live, everybody. I'm Corey Steuben, president of Monroe & Associates. This is Ben Lindemood. He's the account director and the lead on the Ford Mustang Mach-E Teardown. Today, Ben and I are gonna talk through in detail the components for the thermal system on the Ford Mustang Mach-E, starting with the R1234YF system. In a couple previous videos, we quickly ran through some of the complexity of this system versus the other, but we're gonna get a little, more, a little bit more technical today. We're gonna to run through the thermodynamics of a AC compressor. We're gonna compare and contrast to some heat pump systems that are out there, and even talk about how this was accomplished on an old school ICE engine platform. Um, so right in the center of the table, you see the AC compressor for the Ford Mustang Mach-E. Because there's no engine, it is run by a small electric motor. This is a high voltage electric motor, and see the orange connector on the side. Typically these run at 250 to 350 volts. There's a tremendous amount of energy needed to compress the gas, the R1234YF. And Ben and I are gonna run through how the system works. So the, the gas uh, is compressed in the compressor and it starts to flow out this line. There's a small rubber section because there's a lot of vibration that's happening in this, in this compressor. The first stop for the compressed gas is the condenser. So the reason it goes to a condenser is because refrigerants, when, com when they are compressed, they increase in temperature quite a bit. Um, so as it flows into the condenser, that is where the heat is rejected out. In a typical ice engine, um, you would have a condenser that looks just like this. Uh, the only difference is the pump is spun by the front end accessory drive, and it's not spun by an electric motor. So Ben's gonna explain what happens after it flows through the condenser. All right, uh, as Corey said, this is a condenser and it's doing just what you think it is. The, it's condensing the, uh, the refrigerant as it goes through. As it comes in, it is a high pressure gaseous, uh, it's in a high pressure gaseous state. So as it comes through, it is very, it's very hot. It is getting cooler air that's brought in from outside of the vehicle. It's either sucked in through the fan if you're stationary or if you're driving down the road, uh, the grills will open up uh, on this and allow air to flow over it. So as it cools, it's condensing. The same thing uh, that you get when you have a, a cold can of Coke. When you go outside on a humid day, you start to get condensing liquid on the outside of it, it's gonna turn into a high pressure liquid at the end as the temperature drops. So we end up with a colder liquid that comes out of this and this will flow up and into either the chiller or into the cabin. We'll talk about the chiller first. There is a thermal expansion valve here. So as it flows up, the high pressure liquid will go into this expansion valve and there is, it's electronically controlled to open and close the valve as needed. And as that, uh, as the high pressure liquid comes in, it is turned back into a gaseous state. Uh, when it turns into a gaseous state, the temperature drops significantly again. So it expands, changing the pressure, changes the, changes the temperature. Uh, this is exchanging some of the, uh, the, now that we have a cold refrigerant, this is a heat exchanger that chills the, uh, the gly ethylene glycol loop in this system. So when it goes to cool the battery or anything else, it'll be going out of here. And yeah, the, the liquid continues along and goes up to the thermal expansion valve that is at the front of dash. Um, the thermal expansion valve at the front of dash is not electronically controlled, it is a thermally controlled uh, thermal expansion valve, which allows the R1234YF to expand into this evap evaporator. This is an evaporator which you would see on EVs or ICE engines. Um, the, the way that they're achieving the cooling is common, ICE versus EV. Um, after, the, after the liquid expands to gas and you've rejected the heat, it, it actually goes back into this larger line. You notice the, lar the line is larger to accommodate the gaseous state. That flows back around here, back into the pump to start the cycle over again. 
Now, the reason we're running through this entire system is to show you how they achieve cooling of the electronics and how they achieve cooling of the cabin. Now, there's also heating of the electronics and heating of the cabin. The Ford Mustang Mach-E uses a traditional heater core. This is a, essentially a heat exchanger that's inside your HVAC module. Where do they get this heat? This heat is generated through this PTC heater. This PTC, PTC heater is also applied with high voltage electricity. Um, this happens to be a five kilowatt, 298 volt PTC heater. PTC means positive temperature coefficient. There we go. And this PTC heater is performing tasks. It is providing heat to not only the cabin, but Ben, also the and again, also this will heat up the batteries. Uh, so there are lines that run between this PTC heater and this heater core. And as they come back, this isn't just a closed loop between these. It'll go from the PTC heater to the cabin core. And then this will run down and there's some valves that allow it to go to the, um, to the battery if the battery needs to be heated as well. Very similar to how your toaster works at home where you turn it on and there would be there's resistors inside of it that heat up, that will heat up your toast. There's resistors running through here that will heat up. And instead of heating up your toast, it's heating up the ethylene glycol to flow either into the cabin or into the batteries to heat the batteries. And this is something that is very similar to what was done in traditional ICE engines. Um, when you have a gasoline or a diesel engine, they are 30 to 35 percent efficient. They're not real efficient in turning the energy that's stored in the fuel into uh, power to drive down the street. There's a lot of noise that's created, heat that's created, uh, vibration that's created in that process. So in a ICE vehicle, you take the heat that is waste essentially from the engine and you turn that into heat in the cabin. So they are replacing the engine heat with the PTC heater uh, in the, in the Mach-E thermal system. Now when you're looking at a heat pump system, it's essentially eliminating the need for a PTC heater and a heater core. And they take the condenser, which is typically hot, and they put it inside the HVAC module. So you have an evaporator and a condenser, both inside the HVAC module. These two parts are from the Tesla Model Y. Now, the reason there's a, some advantages to a heat pump is that it's more efficient to compress refrigerant um, pull some heat out through a liquid cooled condenser and send it into the uh, evaporator. And then when you need heat, you take that same compressed R1234YF and you pump it into a condenser that's inside of your HVAC case. This eliminates the need for extra componentry and it also eliminates the need to have that. Um, using a liquid cooled condenser, which we highlighted in, our, in one of our previous episodes, um, it, it's a small plate interface, which allows for the elimination a lot of a lot of the piping that goes out to the front of the vehicle. Um, w when it comes to electric vehicles, they really struggle to generate heat in very cold environments. Early Tesla Model 3s did not have a heat pump and they performed poorly from a range perspective in northern climates, Norway, Alaska, and whatnot. Um, so now moving forward, all Model 3s and Model Ys have heat pumps. Many other EVs also have heat pumps or have plans to have heat pumps. The Nissan Leaf has a heat pump. The Jaguar I-Pace has a heat pump. And those systems are really to help ac accommodate a global market. If you're in a warm environment, a heat pump is overkill. It's not necessarily needed. Um, but there's pros and cons to both systems. So I hope that this quick overview that Ben and I gave showed a little more detail into the pieces and parts in the, in the thermal system on the Mustang Mach-E, particularly the R1234YF system. Um, if you enjoy what you see, we'd really appreciate if you consider hitting that subscribe button. And uh, we have a lot more content coming in the next little bit. Sorry Sandy Monroe wasn't here. He's just so incredibly busy that um, he's, he told Ben and I, he's like, you guys can handle this episode. So thanks for watching, everybody, and we appreciate it. Thanks. Bye.